Hello and welcome to Business of Machining, episode 12. I am one of your hosts, John Grimsmo. And I'm John Saunders. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. How's it going? Uh, you know what? Great. Like, legitimately great. Ooh, legitimately great. I like it. Yeah, and, and you know why? We had so... This could have been... We got, like, fortunate or lucky in the sense that we had some stuff go on this week um, that went well. But um, more importantly... Uh, I, what I did well was was actually manage my time and schedule and realistic expectations. So it just felt fulfilling. Like so, we had um, we have this thing with our Haas where we I think it's just our coolant is um, po- causing the tool changer to have a little bit of suction. So it sounds like it's a popping noise when it pulls the Cat 40 tool out. And I think long story short, what it is is that the, when your coolant um, you know has some reverse emulsification or it. Uh, or it, the water evaporates out, it forms a little bit more of a sticky, almost not honey-like, but stickier yeah, yeah. stuff. Just thick oil. So it's just a question of cleaning that. But Haas was here just taking a look at it. They've been great. Uh, the Okamoto surface grinder guy was here. That went great. We had Qualichem here filming. That went great. I had someone here on Monday, and I can't even remember at this point. Oh, um, a new training thing we're, we're playing around with, which I'll talk about later if it happens. And then, um, and then we did a plate surface plate party where we had a... Uh, lapping company come in and we had nine had folks bring in nine different plates and we all lapped our plates in and amongst all of that we kept the shop running and and running well and i was never too stressed and all that that's amazing that's a good week man how's you how's your week busy um we're starting to run out of materials (laughs) from uh, in a in a bad way yeah in, in a in a bad way but you know, stuff's on order. Stuff's starting to come in now. So we got new handles coming in. But um, we're sort of in the calm before the storm, before, like, the okay. next wave of production starts. Um, since since we're getting low on materials um, and I'm falling behind on some of the machining stuff. So we're getting a lot of random stuff around the shop done. Like, I installed uh, coolant filters on the on my Mori. Yes. Oh, because you're because you're doing the grinding. Because we're doing the grinding and and all the small machining and stuff. It's just making all this dust. Um, so that's that's really fantastic. Had a lot of uh, leak issues trying to get these things dialed in. Um, oh, really? Yeah, just uh, the wrong kind of fittings. Like you know, you're looking at the McMaster website and you try to figure out what to mm-hmm. order, and when it gets here, you're like, that won't even. That's not even physically possible to thread that together the way it all <laughs> works. You know, as 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 careful as I was trying to be. But uh, so a couple of trips to the local uh, Parker distributor store, and a lot of money later, and then <laughs> yeah, right, good to go. So it's just an external can filter, like a uh, external filter. Yeah, uh, bag filter, uh, t- canister, filter cartridge, whatever you call it. Yeah, um, sounds right. Pearson Work Holding a couple months ago put up a picture on their Instagram <laughs> about. I know they're all over, um, but about how they did their filtration system with McMaster part numbers and everything. So that, that's kind of the impetus to uh, get going that's on That's cool. Well, I, I got to buy a, or buy or build, or actually I should not build, um, a either uh, filt, canister filter or screen filter or magnetic filter for the grinder because it has nothing right now. It's just a straight cool and return. Yeah. Hmm. Are you happy with it or do you, TBD? I think I'm happy with it now. I mean, it's, I was only able to run a couple parts with it last night. Um, but no more leaks. Once we got the right fittings, no more leaks. then uh, it's good to go. That's cool. And, and we, figured, feel- we figured these filters are going to last for about three or four days before they need to be replaced just because of all the junk that's probably in the coolant already. Serious? Well, oh it's, my- oh, wow. it's dirty now, right? Right. Next, next filter oh, change man. should last a lot longer. I mean, it okay, not, not, doesn't look dirty. I'm just assuming that it needs to be cleaned. Mm-hmm. So. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like... I feel like I don't like this. Uh, hold on, what's that? Are you getting a weird noise? Never mind. I don't know. It's gone. Um, I feel like last week or in the few weeks before, it's been like good uh, progress on machining. I feel like I don't like when you say like a next wave and certain. No, that's not good. Like I it's know, supposed it's to good. be um, slow and steady and in, in, in the process and a rhythm. Not this. You know, we're getting ready for a, yeah. the invasion. Yeah, it is. So what's up with what's up with that? Um, last week was our, probably our biggest week definitely our biggest week ever in production and it was fantastic today it's oh, just slowed down as far yeah. as as far as knives out the door and there's some excusable reasons but um maybe not um 
<clears throat> but get there. It's funny, the, uh, our friend at uh, SS CAD Cam that was on WhatsApp last night mentioned that he, his day just got like totally hosed because he broke a through spindle coolant drill. And uh, for those of you out there that don't have, have never had the luxury of using a TSC drill, they are like got the eighth wonder of the world. I absolutely love them. We've been using them so much on our Haas. It is, and, it, and this comes from a frugal bootstrapper. I've never been so excited to pay two hundred dollars for Jeez. a drill bit in my life. But uh, they are very different in the sense that you can't just. I mean, if you want to replace it with a through with a non through spindle drill, you've got to completely change your speeds and feeds, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's maybe it's more mental than anything. But he had that problem too, where it's like, okay, now all of a sudden I got to slow it down, I got to peck, I got to do full retract, I got to worry about chip build up. And you know, we, we, were, we had a rush job come in. I think I mentioned it maybe last week, but it came back in again. And we were poking a, uh, it's a little under half inch, 468 drill down 1.75 inches in steel at, again, I think it's, I don't even, I backed it way down to go easy on it. And it was like 70 inches a minute, no Jeez, pack. in steel. <laughs> oh yeah, steel. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But it's, but, my point, what kind of made me think was a little mental note, which is that we, uh, it's so fun to talk about process, but process, I guess, just isn't, you know, in some sense, process is bringing the past into the future. Like, you know, you're like, okay, what I've learned in the past, I need to memorialize on a piece of paper. And I love this, still love this idea of laminating it and so forth. But the process, I think, also has to do with the future, um, which is now, at this point, you should have inventory on hand. You should have supply on hand. You... Uh, should have certain key tools like that. Suck it up, buy a second one. Uh, you know what? Because guess what? Drill bits break. There's zero chance that that drill bit is in use in the shop in a year or two. Period. Right. Yep. So just do it. Uh, yep. You shouldn't run out of Torx screws. <clears throat> <laughs> the screwdrivers, yeah. Oh, is it? What is it? Oh, it's the screwdriver. Yeah, the screwdriver. Got it. Okay. The little flag flag wrenches. Got it. Yep. Um, and on that note, I had a. I was on this luncheon call yesterday. I couldn't drive over to the place, I was, or it was a ways away, but uh, it was this entrepreneur's forum, and uh, one of the guys was talking about his story, and he had a saying that I, I like it so much that I might make a little sign out of it. Growth eats cash for breakfast. <laughs> that could not be more true. Holy cow. <laughs> right? Yep. And it's, and it's, you know, money is fungible, but cash is different. It's cash is investment and equipment. Cash is payroll. Cash is working capital. Cash is, yep. you know, so many different types of cash. Yep. But growth loves it all. <laughs> it's so hungry. That's very true. Um, yeah, but it was cool. It was, uh, they were talking about the E-Myth revisit, or the E-Myth book, and I, I had to laugh because I was like, I know I've read it, but I feel like it's been a while. I couldn't find my copy at home. And I went into my Amazon order history and I was like, well, let me just see if I bought it, you know, a year ago. And then I'll get mad at myself because it has to be somewhere. And it was uh, purchased on August 15th of 2002. Was Amazon even around in 2002? Obviously, but uh, apparently because <laughs> I have a photographic, I have a proof of the order. So That's... that book's long gone. So I'll buy another one. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a good book. Uh, I know you've spoken well of it, and I need to reread it. Yep, yep. It, it suits through different phases of business. You know, you, you got it 13 years ago. You probably haven't read it much since. Um, you'll read it differently now, for sure. Right, right. Yep. And that is a good point. I, I like that. Um, I've built, been building up a little library of things that I need to reread because books, you know, they're, they kind of... They're like a filter. They kind of go in and out. And yep. for me, I, I, every two or three years, I try to reread... Um, how to win friends and influence people because that was more than anything else that book sort of shaped my adult character and life and outlook on life and how you kind of going back to that make your own happiness and um, yeah just a big book for me hmm. yeah I actually have not read that one yet I, I've heard about it a lot it. Yeah, yeah I should read it I'd like to yep um, let's see what else did I do this week um, oh yeah since I've been talking about it so many times throughout the podcast the grinding wheel um, came in last Friday. This is a week and ago, and uh, this I, is the one to do your knife bevels. Yes, yes, this is the one that I've been working on. I mean, I've been working on this grinding project for like seven months. I feel like I know Lind at this point. Exactly, 
<laughs> and uh, so the wheel came in last Friday after four weeks of being custom ordered and custom made and everything. I got it mounted up. I got it true. It took me a long time. I took my time. And then right at like end of the day, I was kind of rushing it. And I was like, I just want to grind one blade before I go home. I want to see what the finish looks like. And it was the stupidest thing ever because I rushed and I forgot to tell the controller that it's a two inch wheel, not a 1.75 inch wheel. Uh, and it crashed. The new one was bigger. Yeah, the new one was bigger. And I knew it was bigger, but I forgot to tell the controller. And I'm using cutter comp for all the grinding uh, passes. So it, it smushed going down, and then it ground itself in. It moved my vice over about 50 thou. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't realize that till the next day. And uh, the, the wheel's destroyed. Like, I was crushed. Oh, God. I'm over it now. That was the one it took, took like four weeks. No, that's... well. It's like four weeks, right, yeah, to get it? Yeah, totally. I was totally oh. crushed last Friday. Um, and you don't even know if it was, you never even, you, don't, you have no idea if it was good. Exactly. Right? Like, I, I was never oh. able to, to get a finish from it. So, you know, at that point, you just hit the e-stop and go home. And <laughs> just like, you're done. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But, yeah, lesson learned. And then I came in on Saturday. The what, next, is, what is the lesson learned? The lesson is don't rush. And don't think you can do things last minute when they're that important. Um, that's, that's my lesson. I often run into problems when I'm rushing right at the end. I just want to get this one yeah. thing done. It's a stupid rule you tell yourself. Like, like, I just want to do this, and then I'll be happy, and then I'll go home. But you yeah. need to be able to back off and be like, that's going to be there tomorrow. Like, it's, it's important. Right. I, there's no benefit to rushing it now. Um, it's just you, you tell yourself you want to do it, so you need to make it happen, but it's kind of stupid. Right. Um, well, so the lesson learned was to just, you shouldn't, you should have, you were too tired. You're, it was just, you shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Is it, that the lesson learned? I, I shouldn't, yeah, I shouldn't have gone that last extra little mile and, and rushed that last little thing. So I, I should have just set it all up and be like, you know what? I'm going to come in with a fresh face in the morning and, right. and check everything, crush it. Um, and then I probably would have remembered to do it. But I struggle with this though, because like we were filming with Qualicam and it was just me and uh, Jen Bocamp from Qualicam. And it, so I had two GoPros, two digital cameras, and then two Zoom audios for the audio. And so six camp, six things to hit record on. And I, you know, I've been filming for years. I've got my stuff together. I keep it low stress, I'm casual. And I was like, okay, this going, that's going, that's going, that's going. And at the end of our two and a half hours of talking, I looked down and my, my Zoom audio was on and recording, but my laugh mic was off. Oh. Uh. And it's like, I don't know that I can tell myself what the solution is to that right, because right. I wasn't rushing. I was fresh and I was going through, I was trying to be methodical short of making like a checklist for every device. Mm -hmm. um, it, maybe it's just a bad system because it's, it's just too, too much, much yeah. too many batteries, too many SD cards and all that. Yeah. Because it's, it's like so easy for you and me to sit here and reverse analyze these situations when we're, not in the moment, but I know what you mean. I mean, they, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, I just want to go home and think about the next steps now that that went well. You're right. Not wait for tomorrow, like with that wheel. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like you just want to keep crunching, but, um, but anyway, I came back in the morning and the wheel is like in pieces. It's still attached to the arbor, but it's missing a bunch of pieces, but there's still like a strip of it that when rotated is mm -hmm. still whole. So I'm like, you know what? It's so you've got, a, you've got a two flute wheel now. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it looks like an end mill now. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to grind with it anyway. Just if I can get a surface finish from it, then, yeah. I, then I can have feedback to send back to Linda because I don't even know if the composition of the wheel works with what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I'm like, okay, next time I'm going to order two just in case. But if I order two and they don't work because it's the wrong composition because I never got to check it, then that's another four weeks down the drain. Um, Why are you ordering two? In case you break one more. Nah, you, you won't. I mean, no, but but you know what I mean. To have two on hand, like you just said earlier about drill bits. Um, well, but I would agree. With that, but that's because that tools you're just experimenting. Exactly. I would order right. two for something that's part of your part of your wheelhouse. Totally. Pun, in, pun intended. So anyway, I was able to get a finish from it, um, and it's noticeably better than the old grinding wheel. But it's still. You know, not perfect, but that could be excusable because the wheel is totally mangled. And anything over 4,000 RPM, you can hear that it's out of balance. Like, whoa. Oh, so, that's true. Uh, so it's, it might actually work. Um, so I, I, took, I took video, actually, of uh, just on my phone real quick of 
grinding thoughts. I explained it about eight minutes of video and I sent it to Linda and I mm -hmm. showed, you know, this is the other wheel, this is this wheel and, and uh, explained it all. And I sent it to her and her boss and uh, they both got back to me and they're like, nobody has ever gone to this length to work with us before and like like to to feedback with us and we we appreciate it so much and i'm like this is just what i do like <laughs> right right like value add you know um i want the right result and showing video is probably the best way to do it because you can yeah. you can speak freely it's not an email um so that worked out really well so yeah she's going to make me one the exact same and then one slightly different slightly softer cutting freer cutting hmm. uh and then i'll get two and they're going to try to rush it maybe two to three weeks sweet so you can't you can't dress it down, right? To yeah, hose, it's, it's hosed. Smaller diameter. Yeah, it's completely hosed. It's just on. So the wheel is. You said it's a vitrified wheel. It's resin bond wheel. Resin bond. So it's bonded around a co solid core, like yep. a steel core aluminum. that is the arbor. Yep. Yep. Aluminum core. It's aluminum. Mm -hmm. So the shank is aluminum as well. Yep. Well, it's okay. not a shank. It's like a. It looks like a donut, like a square shaped donut. Okay, what's the, so then there's a vertical shank that you put into an ER it, collar holder? No, it goes into a, onto a shell mill holder. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, got it. Yep. Wow, oh, that thing's beefy then. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so I got the old wheel mounted up. I haven't trued it up yet, but um, be back and rocking uh, today, hopefully, grinding good the job. old way, which is good. Right. It's a good lesson too. Um, I, uh, you you you, they, you talk about like getting kicked when you're down. It's like that happens, and then you you try to recover and you just move forward instead of taking us like literally. That's sometimes we're all slow as fast. Like I will actually legitimately stop and I'll go for a walk around my building. Yeah. Just just take a one one lap and come back in and then just look at the machine. And that's when you're like, wait a minute, I should sweep my vice in because so demoralizing if you then start making bad parts because like you said, your vice is out. Yep. Yeah, because I, on the next next Saturday when I came in to to grind with the bad wheel, I was like awkwardly placed with one hand on the feed hold and one hand on the e stop for like six minutes watching this thing take fifty <laughs> passes, and it didn't right. touch the entire time because the vice is fifty thou out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So that was funny. Yeah, but but yeah, like almost immediately after I crashed it, I was reciting your mantra in my head like. Like slow is smooth, smooth is fast, yeah. And uh, it just felt so stupid. So that's okay. Yeah, it happens. I mean, yeah. I'm totally over it now, and realize it's just a silly thing. There, w there will be many more in the future. <laughs> no, and that's the debate. You know, somebody was telling me, you know, with the Haas or the VMC, you, you know, always cut uh, in air first. You know, or you know, set a two-inch Z offset above your part and run that first. And I'm kind of like. Uh, maybe maybe the 50 year old John will look back at the 33 year old John and say you were immature and you were you were rushing, but I, I, it's a trade off. I, I, I can't yeah. I can't cut. We we run so many programs. I cannot cut each one in air. I trust my generally trust my tools. I generally trust my cam simulation. Mistakes will happen, but um, I, I don't know. I just I can't. I can't justify the amount of time it would take. You know, don't get me wrong. We do um, either uh, option block or uh, single line, single block, and uh, we'll turn cooling off and pause and look at yep. distance to go and stuff. But like, I'm not going to run it in the air every program. Yeah, you got to trust yourself and your experience. As now, much if I had a can. lathe, that would be very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I often run the lathe without the coolant or slowly. Uh, I don't often change Z like out two inches and then cut it. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll put brass in there, just a bit more forgiving. But yeah, I'll often go single line or optional stop and just really slow. How have you gotten so good at, I mean, I know you do some parting, and actually you do some facing ops on your subspindle that are like three thou in front of the collet, yep. right? Yep. How'd you, how'd you get good at that? Very slowly, ran into a couple collets. Oh, you did? Oh yeah. You use um, brass collets? Sometimes, mostly the steel ones. Mostly just hardened stainless. Yep. <laughs> yep. Insert cuts right through it like butter. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just slow, slow, slow. Oftentimes, like on the subspindle, I'll get all the offsets right. I'll, I'll manually jog the tool in place, manually pull it down to the sub, and like mm -hmm. see where the numbers are. And like I can okay. visually see it's three thou out 
at, at Z0, it's going to work. <laughs> and then there's that issue of trust. Like, like everything I, I see, everything I know tells me it's going to work. So I just, I'll, I'll do it slowly, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then it's essentially, it's CNC. If it clears once, it's going to clear the next time. <laughs> totally, yeah, that, that I have, I'm with you there. But boy, I, I was thinking about how, I don't know if it'll ever happen in meaning if it's even in the next few years, but this idea of Fusion 360 or similar type software having machine simulation where I can actually either download or model up my turret or my whole vice system and, and nose and spindle and so forth and actually being able, or fifth axis stuff, and being able to actually see true, which I think, uh, I think like some of the big software already yeah, has, yeah, but again, sure. it's five figure stuff, right? Yeah, like uh, for the Nakamura lathes, they often sell them with Camplete software. Oh yeah, which is a simulation software. Um, but it's like seventeen grand. Though. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But you know, if if you have a two or three turret lathe, and right. uh, oh my god, you need that, right? Remember that video you sent me like six months ago of that lathe that was rigid tapping between a moving sub spindle and a moving sub axis. Yeah, for those listening, go to YouTube and Google. Miano, M-I-Y-A-N-O, uh, I-M-T-S, or something like that. It's a three turret lathe, and everything's happening at the same time. It's this was insane. It's literally like, think your tail stock, which has a spindle, is running away from the head stock, and while it's running away, a turret on the low bottom side is chasing it with a rigid tap, and rigid, or, or something, right? Or, yeah, or threading. I think that lower turret is both turning on the main spindle and rigid tapping <laughs> on the sub because the sub is chasing it. It's like you watch that and you're just mind blown, like crazy stuff. Yeah, that may have been one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yep, I agree. And uh, oh my god, I think they had that at IMTS, but we must have missed it or something. I can't wait for IMTS again. I know there's CMTS coming up in Toronto uh, this this uh, awesome September, so I'll be going to that. Well, for sure. I'm going to PMTS in Columbus, Ohio, in a few. Actually, by the time this airs, it's That's probably right. like a week or two away. But if anybody wants to come. I'll be at the Precision Machining Technology Show in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, you went last year, right? I think I went two years ago. I don't know if it skips a year or whether I just skipped it last year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those shows yeah. are crazy, though. Nothing's like IMTS, though. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't, I'm excited for PMTS, but I, I think I'm excited for IMTS because I, you know, remember you and I had that conversation outside of the knock or, or no, at, well, who's your distributor, Methods? or uh, Elliot Metzer. Elliot Metzer. Over here, I feel like we were at Method. Well, when we were just talking about where we were in life and what we were doing in the road ahead, and I feel like I feel like that whole conversation is now even different. And that was only five months ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have a Haas now, and you didn't then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know that's a big thing. It was a big thing. Yeah. What's on tap today? Today, first thing, I'm finishing up a fixture for my surface grinder. Oh. So all these new handles that we're getting for the rasks, we decided to save a significant chunk of money by not having them double disked. Um, oh. I thought double disc was cheap. It can cheap. be cheap, uh, but the lead time is a oh. lot. And uh, we don't have the time right now to be out of parts. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we've got 200 rask knives uh, in material now, but they're way too thick. So I want, I want one side of them to be flat, like mm -hmm. not optically flat, but at least flat enough to lay on a fixture without warping or bowing or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I made a steel fixture that's got six pockets in it for the handles with a little Mighty Byte cam action clamp. Cool. That's just gonna hold them from moving. And then we, yep. we can suck the steel fixture onto the surface grinder and surface one, mm -hmm. one side of the titanium handles because they're not magnetic, obviously. Right. And, uh, and then from there, they can go onto the, um, Onto the mill. Is this? I can't believe I'm saying this. Is this the 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 darn thing that you were band sawing last night with your Mori on Instagram? Yep. This is you. You are ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know whether to commend you because you shouldn't buy a tool if you don't need it and use it, or to just just completely <laughs> chew in chew into you for using adaptive slotting as a way to cut raw material. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Work, it worked out. Oh, it worked out great. It's um, and it's something I do so infrequently that, uh, right. yep. Although I just realized as we're talking this, as we're talking about this, that I, 
either need to make another fixture, which sucks, or I did this one wrong. What? Because I put six Why? pockets on it for the, let's say, the left side of the handle, but I really should have uh, put three left and three right. Right. Crap. Can you make it double-sided? <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. I might be able to do that, and then you just Add flip it over and... Okay, yeah, I'll just cut the other side, same thing. Right? Yeah, that won't be too hard. Okay, done. Sweet. It's, uh, I had a good, we're working with Peter's Heat Treat on some stuff again, and I, I mean, I don't know them from Adam. I probably sent them seven jobs in the last year or two, uh, small jobs. And, and it's interesting, because there's this kind of like, I have this mindset in life where it's like, you're always selling. You're always selling yourself on, on in this case, even though they're a vendor. So in theory, you, somebody could argue that they're selling their services to me, but I'm like, no, I have to sell them on why they should help me. In, in other words, not just send in a PO with a part and have it come back, but have them become invested in the process with me. And it's been so helpful because it's this, and I, I wanna figure out how to do a chip break video on it because I don't know that it's always easy to articulate, but it has to do with showing them that you're, you know, you're real, you're a good customer and what you're having them be, understand what you're trying to do and why it's something that they should you know, care enough about to have. I, I really only mean a you know, eight minute conversation, but an eight minute conversation with a guy who's done this for 20 years is so valuable. And we talked about all these different processes. Why well, I even called you about mm -hmm. asking you about some of your processes, trying to just you know, be an entrepreneur, which is you know, kind of tap into your network to get smart. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, too often I see people who are, are greedy or overzealous and they, bas they, they take advantage of that too quickly and they basically become annoying. They, they, uh, they call and they want to talk and it's all me, me, me and you help me and you've got to kind of figure out how to make it a two-way street mm -hmm. there. And obviously I have, I have nothing to offer Peter Teachery other than business, right. but um, making yourself different than the, the other customers that call in so that you build a relationship. It's like what we talked about, just building a relationship. Yep. Adding value in any way that you can. Yeah. Yeah, like when I'm, as so. I'm dealing with Linda for the grinding wheel, you know, the value I can add is the experience I'm learning throughout the process and, you know, taking a quick video of right. how I'm using it and this is a new application for them and et cetera, et cetera. Right. They're excited about the project. Exactly. I didn't even think about this. That's ex that, is, that is exactly the perfect, you are invested in it, she's invested in you, You've like, uh, that's such a good yeah, example. Yeah, that's, that becomes a good partnership when both people are excited about the project and the result that you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Right, and she is so easy as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur or just as a, a guy who's busy to get tunnel vision. And remember, you know, Linda doesn't have a clue. I mean, sure, Grimsmo knives, they make knives, but she doesn't understand who you are. And, but she will when you, she sees your iterative process and how you get invested into it and what you're trying to yep. do. And then I show her a video of me talking and being open and honest and sharing things. And now she knows me. It's like, it's better than a phone conversation. Right. It's, you know, it's almost one-on-one. -on -one. Um, similar right. thing with, you know, Eliab Matsura for my lathe. I, I'm invested in them and they're invested in me for, you know, they mm -hmm. want to see me succeed. They want to see what I'm working on. They want to come to the shop and like see the parts that I'm making. And they think it's so awesome. Yeah. I don't really have that with DMG Mori. It's more just like you know, money changing hands kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's funny. I've gotten to know the uh, Haas um, AE that's pretty, he's pretty sharp, he's pretty good. And uh, he, you know, we, I mean, we, we, we talked to each other and, and he's helped me out with some things. And then he was like, hey, I gotta go judge a high school uh, state championship for machining. How freaking cool wow. is that? And he's like, you wanna come along <laughs> as a judge? He's like, Haas, Haas normally does it all, but we always look for some people that can help balance it out or whatever. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, absolutely. And it got me actually thinking about a good video to do, which is like, I don't know, 10 ways to give back or 10 ways to pay it forward as a entrepreneur, business, or, you know, machinist or, or whatever you want to call it, CNC guru. Right. Um, so we're going to go up in a couple of weeks to Columbus and I guess judge that competition. That's awesome. But, uh, I thought that, yeah, I was excited. That's super cool. And it's cool, like I, I'm doing it because obviously I love it and it's, and it's a good chance to, you know, we, I, we're gonna drive up together, spend more time in the car together, but it's like, I'm not just a customer anymore to them. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's, it's more than yep. that. Which and I that's, like. that's valuable for both parties. Yep. yep. Fantastic, what are you up to today then? Uh, running the service grinder for the first time. We, we did ground in a part just to test out a few weeks ago, but we didn't have the coolant set up and 
yesterday we got it all all done. The, the, uh, that company, Reynolds Machinery, that sells them is servicing it for us, and it was the same sort of story. Like it was so awesome. Uh, their their service tech, who's just such a solid guy, came in, figured out this one little valve that was sticking. Like he had the confidence to tear into it. It's now working automatically on the Z plunge. So it kicks out, sparks out, parks the tape. This is a 1982 machine. There's a single circuit board in it, and it can still automatically plunge down to your zero. When it gets to zero, it can spark out however many times you have the dial set. And when it gets to that last spark out and it's done, it parks the table off the part. What? All mechanically. Holy cow. I'll show it to you when you're here for the open yeah. house. It's freaking awesome. So we got the coolant plumbed up last night. Uh, it's working, so I'm gonna. Uh, Jared's got a part on the Haas. I want to check before we hit run because it's a big, uh, it's a 34 inch long part. I want to check yeah. it, um, and then I'm gonna go grind a part. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm really I can't excited. wait to see a video on it one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous about. We, we're still using the used wheel that came with the machine, and I really don't like that because I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I have no idea how to evaluate if I get good or bad results because I don't even know what the wheel is. Yeah. Everyone says to buy a Norton 46H, uh, and they're not actually that expensive, but I'm nervous because I don't really know how to balance a grinding wheel. So I gotta, gotta get smart yeah. on that. Yeah, there's lots of information out there. I'm sure Suburban Tool has about 14 videos on it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, what size wheel is it? Seven inch or bigger? No, two inch by 12 inch. Two inch wide? Five inch, five inch arbor, two inches wide, and that, that is a that's no Tormac surface grinder, huh? <laughs> it is not a small machine. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see it at the open yeah, house. Excited. Speaking of which, quick um, announce the open house. Like we haven't said that on the podcast yet. That's sorry, great point. So Saturday, May sixth, the annual NYC CNC open house. We are uh, welcoming anybody and everybody. You can RSVP at uh, nyccnc.com. There'll be a link at the top to the open house. And the idea this year is a little bit different if you happen to have come in the past few years. Instead of just sort of having an open format where you can come and, and hang out and talk and meet other people like John Grimsmo, we're going to do a series of clinics this year. So stay tuned. We'll announce it more formally here. Actually, it will already be out on the NYC CNC YouTube channel by the time this podcast airs. But um, we're going to have, I think, 10 or 15 different of these little clinics. So like John Grimsmo is going to be doing three different, or excuse me, three of the same knife making clinics where he's gonna talk for 10, 20, 30 minutes then answer some questions. Um, and so the idea is each clinic will repeat a few times. So hopefully you can kind of pick the few that you are interested in and be able to make it to all of them. Yeah, yeah, I saw the roster. It looks like uh, CAD CAM stuff, uh, surface, uh, I don't know. Yeah, R Robin Renzetti is gonna do a talk on how to dress surface grinding wheels. Adam Booth is gonna talk about dialing and four jaw chucks. Uh, Mr. Pete Tubalcane is going to actually make an appearance, which is, I think, his first public okay. one, which is pretty cool. Uh, James Kilroy is going to do an intro to hand scraping. We've got a hand scraper and a biax power scraper where you'll be able to see that, and maybe that might be the only one where we're going to allow uh, participants or attendees to actually use the tool. We can't let people use yeah, lathes no, and fine. grinders at the show for obvious reasons, but uh, I'm really excited. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I'm going to bring uh, wife and kids down, too. So excited. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, we'll crush it, bud. Sounds good. Have a great day. I'll see okay, you. Bye. Take care.